y'all. Bonjour, hola. My name is Trish. If you're new and looking to advance in Photoshop, please hit the subscribe button and join the family of learners. Shall we begin? So the first thing we're going to do is set our background. So I'm going to go to my adjustment and we are going to choose gradient and notice that it created a new layer for us. We're going to click on the gradient and then we're going to go in the purple ish and we are going to choose the preset uh, purple 07. We're going to click on that. Now it's close enough to what we want, but we want it much more deeper. So I'm going to click on the right gradient color stop, click on the color and I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. So I get something a little bit more richer tone of the purple, but in a darker tone. And we are going to click OK and click on the other one. And I'm going to click and also change that and choose something a little bit more darker like that. So I have these two tone. I'm going to go ahead to click OK and OK. So with this set, we want to center our gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click and choose radar, add a new layer by clicking on the plus icon, pick up your brush tool and you want to change the color. Now we are just going to click in the center to create one dot just like that. So with this set, we want to go ahead and pick up our shape tool and we are going to pick the polygon. Now at the very top, we want to change the size to six. You might have a five. So all you need to do is change the size at the top. So you have a six. Now we can go ahead and just draw our polygon like this, which is a six sided polygon. Now I don't want a sharp edge polygon. I want it to be curved with a recent Photoshop 2021 and 2022. It comes with um, an easy way to curve your edges because you see this little dots in the middle of your shape. Now, if you don't have that, all you need to do is go under your property and you notice that you have the option of changing up the size, click on the fill for the shape. And I want to use a gradient. So I'm going to click on gradient and I'm going to change the color. Now we still want to stick with the purple. So I'm going to click on the first one and we are going to choose somewhere in the purple. So you notice that I just clicked somewhere here so I can basically pick up on what I already have. Now I'm going to go ahead to click OK. So we're going to double click on the white and we are also going to change that. Now we do have a darker uh, purple but I want to keep it a little bit more on the lighter end. Now with this set, I'm going to go ahead to click OK and we want to still go ahead under our appearance. We want to take out the stroke color. So you want to make sure you choose the rectangle with the red line across. So basically we have no background. Now the last thing you want to do is click on your gradient and you can change the angle of your gradient on your shape. So I'm just going to set it this way. So I have the darker more towards the bottom and you notice that I'm pulling my stop so I can see more of the darker portion of my color on the left hand side and the brighter side is at the top. Now I want to add a black shadow. So I'm going to double click on my polygon layer. It will pull up my layer style. Now I'm going to move it to the side so you can see the changes as we make it. So if you click on the drop shadow, you notice that it added a drop shadow on the bottom. So if we want the drop shadow on the top, click on your drop shadow, change the angle. And as you play with the angle, you notice that it's changing it. And if you're satisfied with this, you can go ahead and click OK. If you want to increase your shadow, you can go ahead and increase the distance as well. So with this set, I'm going to go ahead to click OK. Now, the next thing we want to do is to make a duplicate of our shape. Now, before we do that, I'm going to move my shape. So I center it right in the middle of the canvas. Now, notice that because I have my guidelines, 
is set it right in the middle. So with this set, I'm going to click on my polygon, make a copy, command J, make a copy. I'm going to move that out. Now I want to get rid of the shadow. So I'm just going to click on the effects for my drop shadow and it's going to turn it off. Now, secondly, we want to go back into our property, click on your fill, take out the color of the fill. Now with a stroke, we want to add a stroke effect and we want a gradient stroke effect. So click on your gradient and we're going to choose the cyan and purple gradient. And I'm going to go ahead and increase my pixel. So it's a little bit more visible. So I'm going to go with, let's say a 12. I'm going to come out of it. Now you see how it looks. It looks amazing. Now we're going to move the shape and we are going to go ahead and set at that right in between our uh, shape. And I'm going to go ahead to rotate a little and I'm going to go ahead to rescale so I have something more like this. So with this all set, I'm going to make sure that I move this layer so this layer is beneath the polygon, which is the solid. So now that I have this all set, I want to go ahead and type in Black Friday. So pick up your type tool and I'm going to click on my default foreground and background and set my foreground to white. Um, so I'm going to set that on the bottom. Now I want to go ahead and type in the Black Friday. I'm going to use my move tool and I'm just going to go ahead to scale it and set that right in the middle like that. And I'm going to move my offer and set that a little bit below my Black Friday, just like this. Now I want my Black Friday to be a gradient effect. So I'm going to click on my Black Friday and you can basically do it two ways. So I'm going to click on my Black Friday and apply the gradient color that I had by just going to your gradient options above and just clicking on that to apply it. Now, if you want to rotate the angle of your gradient, you notice that when I apply the gradient to the font, it added the layer effect. So I can click on my gradient and I can basically change the angle so I get it the way I want. Add a drop shadow. You can click in between and we are going to set our drop shadow to normal and I'm going to increase my distance so you can begin to see the shadow effect that is created on the text. So I'm going to go ahead to click on my shape and then I'm going to I'm going to select the eclipse and I'm going to go ahead and make a circle. I'm going to go ahead and increase my stroke thickness. This is visible enough for me to be able to move it all around. Now I'm going to go ahead to increase it a little and basically set it in, set it around uh, my shape. So with this set, all I'm going to do is that I want to add a dotted um, uh, circle, uh, a dotted circle effect around my shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my pattern. I've already created the shape and I do have a tutorial. So I will put a link to that in the description below because I have it already said, I'm going to click on that pattern and notice that it just applied it to it. I'm going to go ahead to click. Okay. Now I want to take off the outline, the stroke effect. So click on your stroke and basically click on the rectangle cross check. So it takes it away. Now I just have the dots on my image. Now, obviously I don't want it on top. I want it on the bottom. So I'm going to click on my layer and I'm going to drag that and set that below my shape. And I'm going to take it a step further. So it's right beneath everything. So with this set, you notice that it's black. So it's not showing that well, I want it to be in white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the shape once again, and I'm going to click on my adjustment and add a hue and saturation. Now you need to clip it so that all the changes only happens to the dotted lines that you have. So I'm going to go up to my property, click on this little icon. It will clip your hue saturation layer only to the layer below. Now we want to set our 
dotted, which is black to white. So all you need to do is click on your lightness and take it all the way. And I'm going to reduce the transparency a little. So it's not too much, but it's still visible. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my shape tool and I'm going to go ahead to draw a rectangle like this. And I'm going to fill this in with a cyan. And I'm going to go ahead to make sure that my stroke effect is zero. And I'm going to go ahead to make a copy of this. So command J, I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to move this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn up this one and I'm going to rotate this, the angle that I want. And I'm going to set that right there. I'm going to move this layer and set that all the way below my other shape so it's beneath everything so with this set i'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity of this so it's very very light you can still see it but it's not too strong i'm going to click on it i'm going to click on it and move it up a little and i'm going to zoom out so with this all set we are going to go ahead to add a layer max and then I'm going to use my brush with my foreground as black. You want to make sure that your brush size is big enough and we are going to basically um, erase some portion of our shape like that. And I'm going to add a little bit of a blur effect. So go to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur. And yes, it will ask you if you want to convert this into a smart object. That's the only way it will apply the blur effect. So something like this, not too much, and we are set. So we are going to make a copy of this, Command J. I'm gonna make a copy, and I'm going to move that and set that over on the other side. And I'm going to go ahead to rotate, just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and set that right there. So I have something like this and I'm going to go ahead to add a layer max with my foreground as black. I'm going to pick up my brush and I'm just going to paint this over. So I have this sort of look. Now, if I want to change the color of the, of this one, all I need to do is add a hue and saturation, clip it just like we did before. And now I can change the color so that I get it the way I want, so I can do something like this. So with this set, we can go ahead and add a little bit more. So I'm going to create three more or four more of the same shape um, using the same technique. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and pick up another shape and this time I'm going to draw an eclipse like that and I'm going to fill it in with purple. I'm going to see if I can get a deeper purple. So I'm going to go ahead to make it much more brighter like that and then we are going to make sure our stroke is empty and we are going to move this rotate like that and then set it somewhere here just like this and i'm going to go ahead to add a blur effect so go to filter blur gushing blur and we need to first of all convert this once again to a smart object so once you have that you can play with your filter to get it the way you want so with this set i'm going to go ahead to click ok and I'm going to go ahead to add a layer max so that I can basically brush the bottom in a little bit more. So I have something more like this. Now I want to add a bit more of a light sauce on that pink. So I'm going to go ahead to basically draw in a little bit of a shape like that. 
add a new layer and pick my paint bucket fill that in command d to d select i'm gonna go to filter blair gushion blair and we are going to make sure that this is very um this gives us the illusion of a light source and I'm gonna go ahead to click OK. Now I'm gonna make a copy of this one, this layer, Command J, and I'm gonna make another copy, Command. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a selection of my last eclipse and hold down Shift, select all three eclipse, right click, and I'm going to go ahead to match everything so you can create either a smart object or you can just merge it. So with everything matched, I'm gonna make a copy. So command J, make a copy, move that, and I'm going to set that somewhere here. So we have another light source on the other end. Now I wanna change that light source color to a cyan. So I'm gonna click on my adjustment, add a hue and saturation, and clip it to just the image below. Now I can change the color and I can get the cyan that I want, and boom, there you have it. So to finish it off, we are going to go to the very top of our layer, add a new layer max, pick up your brush tool with your foreground as white, make your brush as big as you can and make sure that your hardness is at zero. We are going to go ahead to create one big dab in the center of our image of our design. Click on your layer then change the blend mode of this to overlay. Notice that it made your final piece a little bit more brighter. So this is the before. Now you can see that this is the after. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next tutorial. Till then, take care of yourselves. Bye all.